Hey guys, it's Jen and today I wanted to share with you this double eyeliner trick makeup tutorial. I think that every monolid slash hooded eyelid girl should have this in your arsenal for days that your eyes are uneven or just when you want to have a little bit more of a dramatic eyeliner effect without having like a super crazy thick wing. Do you know what I mean? When your eyes are closed where it just looks like giant black holes on your eyes, we want to avoid that. We want to do a little bit of more sophisticated approach to that and then the rest of the face it has really blushy cheeks, clear looking skin, and a little bit of an ombre lip. So I hope you guys really enjoy this look. If you want to see it, keep watching. So before I apply anything on my face, I'm going to start off with an eyeshadow primer. I'm using Urban Decay Primer Potion. I like applying this before any of my concealer or foundation because if I try to do that later, sometimes it lays a little funny doing the primer after foundation. So I just do this as the very first step. Next, I'm going to apply a little bit of foundation. Lately, I've been really into just using my fingers for everything. So I'm just going to use my fingertips to apply the foundation. And then I'm just going to spread it in really lightly. Even if it's a really full coverage foundation, I don't do a completely like full coverage layer of foundation. I would rather just do a light layer of foundation and then go on top of that with a concealer to get the coverage that I want. That way you still get a little bit of that skin texture peek through and it just looks a lot more natural instead of looking super heavy or cakey. One tip I do if you want to get a really smooth blend between your face and your neck is as I'm doing my jawline, I open my mouth like this. That way I can really see some of the skin that goes down onto the neck just on top of my jaw edge and it helps me blend it down a little more seamlessly. Next, I'm taking my concealer. This is the Rare Beauty Concealer in 200C. I'm only going to dot this in very specific areas. I don't like doing too much on the under eyes because I just feel like that area is the first place that looks really like where you can see all the fine lines and wrinkles. It just sinks into lines. So I try to go a little more straight down. And then at the corners, I like to go a little bit upward down my nose. And then I'm taking my fingertips again, the pads of my fingers, and I'm just going to tap this in. So that helps it kind of blend in, but still you get the concentration of coverage just exactly right where you need it. Even with this angle, I'm just pressing really lightly and then continuing to go up, sort of like where the corner of my eye is. And that's gonna give you like a really nice snatched look. We just want to keep it super, super subtle. Now I'm going to do some contouring on my face. This is like my favorite thing to do for contouring lately. This is a bronzing stick from Rare Beauty and the shade is Power Boost. I love this because it's just a big, easy crayon. So I literally just do one swipe here. It's going kind of in the, the divot of my ear, like right there. So I just go from this ear divot to between my nose and the corner of my mouth right here. I know it feels a little higher than normal. Like normally I would just go straight in the hollow of my cheeks, but I find that if I do it just slightly higher, it gives a really lifted appearance that I've been liking lately. I mean, I feel like beauty trends change all the time, but the thing to do lately is having a little more high snatched kind of hollowed out cheekbone look. So that's just a little trick you can try. Just do your bronzer just like one inch higher than you normally would. The only other place that I'm going to do my bronzer for today, other days, you know, I like to do a little more contour. Today, I'm just gonna keep it simple, just the cheekbones and down the bridge of my nose. So I like to go just inside the natural line of where my nose is. And then when you're blending out, you're gonna wanna blend outward. That way you still get a little bit of sharpness down the middle but it still looks nice and natural and blended out. I mean, you really want this to be like pretty much invisible with just like a little extra help. Same with the cheekbones. I like to blend this a little more down. And then I kind of go over the top of it. Next, I'm applying blush. I'm going in with this liquid one from Rare Beauty called Hope. My favorite way to apply this is actually applying it right here on my arm, arm, hand, thumb, <laughs> the palm of my thumb. And then what I do is I put my hands together like this, pat it together, 
So I have like two blurred sections. I just find that this is the easiest way to apply liquid blush because it applies to both cheeks really evenly. So I make sure they're blended evenly on my hands. And then I just starting from right here, wherever I want the blush to be, I just kind of pat it in a circle and it naturally blends it all together. If I have some leftover, sometimes I'll put some on my nose a little bit or right here on my head. I don't like to waste. <laughs> but this way it's just not streaky. It doesn't like get all over the place. And I also feel like it's easier to get it so it's not like too heavy, not too heavy handed, it just looks natural. One little tip, I have a little patch of freckles just on this side of my face that sometimes gets not covered all the way when I'm putting on a liquid blush. My trick to fix that is I will mix a little bit of concealer with the blush and then I will apply that to the top of my cheeks. And that does double duty covering up the freckles but also looking super translucent and natural like a liquid blush tends to do. Now I'm gonna move on to my eyebrows. I'm taking this Benefit Brow Pencil. Love the formula of this pencil because it's not too stiff or waxy. I like to fill in the outline of my brow first and then just do little strokes to fill inside the rest. Now I'm taking the spoolie end and I'm just zhuzhing out the front. I feel like even if you have a super snatched brow, if you blend it out in the front, it still ends up looking really natural. Before I get too far into some of my eyeshadow and stuff, I wanna just set certain areas of my face. I don't wanna powder my whole face cause I don't wanna have like a hyper matte look, but just if I use like a little bit more concealer, I like to just kinda tap in some powder under the eye area and my T-zone, just anywhere that gets a little shifty if I move too much. I really like these like mineral sunscreen powders. They give a nice finish without looking overly dewy or matte. Next I'm gonna go in with some eyeshadow. I'm starting off using a kind of neutral, pretty much my skin tone kind of shade. There's a peachy light one here. This is the uh, Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. I love it. And this is just going to help things blend in a little smoother. I had a little sound <laughs> recording trouble, so I don't have the sound clips for this section, but I'll just tell you what I'm doing. I'm taking a peachy eyeshadow that's really close to my skin tone. I'm just sweeping this all over the lid. A little extra tip that's really handy if you have trouble blending is to take a skin colored shadow and just apply it as a base layer because it's a lot easier to blend shadows with a little bit more color over a shadow that's already there versus just trying to blend it straight onto your skin and hoping that it's not going to drag or skip. After I do the peachy shadow on my lid, I'm taking the next shade up. This is like a medium brown tone. I'm applying this on a little circle at the outer corner of my eye. It doesn't have to be really perfect. I would just make a smaller circle and then when you feel more confident, you can make it bigger. So after you apply your little circle, you're going to blend this into the socket of your eye. If you have trouble figuring out where your eye socket is, just take the tip of your eyeshadow brush and push in where your eyelid kind of goes in is where you're supposed to blend into because we're enhancing the natural shadows and contours of your bone structure. Even if your lid is really flat, you still have an eye socket underneath there. So if we just enhance that shape, that's going to give you the most natural shadow look. And then at the outer corners, you're gonna take the same brush and just sweep this up from the corner of your eye up to where your eyebrow, <laughs> where your eyebrow is. So next I'm taking this little flat shadow brush. So I'm going in with that same eyeshadow color. And instead of going right up to my lash line, I'm actually applying this slightly lower. And this is really gonna help widen the eye. So if you look at my two different eyes, you can see that this one looks a lot more elongated. And then at the outer corner, you're going to blend this up into your upper shadow. So it kind of does this swoopy, which is like, this looks a little weird, <laughs> but trust the process it will come together. This is just sort of like an underpainting to give your eyelids a little bit extra contour, shape, shadow. The real star of the show is this right here. This is an eye pencil from Patrick Ta Precision Gel Liner in Burgundy. I really love using a burgundy eyeliner. I know a lot of people are really intimidated by it because they think, oh, it's gonna make me look like I got punched in the eye. But there's something about it that I feel like really warms up the eye and I don't use it as 
as a standalone eyeliner. I like to double it up. It's kind of my own technique. I've never seen anybody else do it. I just think it's really flattering, especially if you have monolids. So if you're a monolitter and you haven't tried this, then this is a great opportunity to try. And I'm actually gonna apply this a little bit wider than you would think. But again, trust the process. You're gonna have to forgive my eyes today because this one has a little double eyelid. This one is monolidded. Trust the process. It's not going to look uneven later. Anyway, the eyeliner is going to be a little bit higher than where I would normally just apply eyeliner. Cause the star of the show is really making this burgundy eyeliner visible, I guess you could say. On this side, because this is the monolidded side, I'm just gonna try to draw it the same way. See where my eyes are at. Next, I'm going to take a black liquid eyeliner and you want this to be a really precise, really waterproof, sharp eyeliner. I'm using the Physician's Formula Waterproof Liner. So with this line, I'm gonna do more of a traditional wing. If you want to touch up anything so that the line is really even above the liquid line, you can also go back and do that. And this is optional, but sometimes I like taking a little brush and going in with a really dark eyeshadow, preferably one that matches the eyeliner. I'm gonna just take this dark brown right here and very, very subtly also just smooth out that line and kind of set the pencil. I also like taking just a little shimmery color and brighten up my inner corners. So I'm gonna take, let's do this pink color. And I'm just going to tap this right at the inner corner. So I'm closing my eyes so that it's all kind of connected. And then I'm gonna blend this just in that lower tear duct area. Now I'm gonna curl my lashes and apply some mascara in the usual way. If you have not seen my whole video on how I curl my lashes very in depth, I will link that above me. Because I know I want to put on lashes for this particular look, I like doing a really waterproof mascara because it holds up my lashes and gives them a little bit more structure for the false lashes to sit on top of. Because as a monolid, sometimes lashes will hang down heavy in front of my eyes and curling my lashes and holding it up with a waterproof mascara first can really help. I'm also going to apply this to my lower lashes. So I'm putting on these kind of light wispy false lashes. I also like to flex the band to loosen it up so that it's more comfy. And then I'm gonna apply the lashes where the inner corner is near my lash line, but the outer corner is going to be near the upper part of the wing. So that'll kind of elongate the eye and open it up as well. Now, once the lashes are on your face, I like to kind of gauge on if I like having a little bit of a lighter eyeshadow look. I know it felt like we put on a lot of shadow underneath the lashes, but once the lashes are on there, sometimes it looks a little more subtle. So depending on my mood, depending on the event I'm going to or whatever it is, sometimes I add one more very light layer of shadow just to the outer corners. So I'm kind of doing the circle blend out trick one more time, but with a slightly darker color and a little bit smaller. So this is with the second layer of shadow, this is without. I think they both look good. Like I said, it just kind of depends on my mood, but you can choose which look you want. Next, we're moving on to the lips. I wanna do sort of a blurred out ombre kind of lip. I feel like the ombre lips of like 10 years ago was just to put a little bit of pink in the middle here with the foundation lips, but I want my lips to look full and still have that ombre effect. So I'm going to line outside side of my lips. I don't like to go super crazy, but I just like a little bit more on like the outer folds right here. Fold? Outer edge? What would you call that for lips? I'm not sure. <laughs> Almost like the curve of like a flower petal. And in between my cupid's bow, I'm just gonna cut it straight across. And then this half of my lip actually hangs a little higher than this side. My lip is a little uneven. So I overline just on the one side to even my lip out. Now I'm just lightly filling in the whole lip. Sometimes I just like having just the lip liner. I love that lip liner so much because it looks 
so natural. So that's the shape that I really like, but then I'm going to take a little bit of color and put it in my inner part of my lip. So this is, uh, man, I'm using a lot of Rare Beauty today, but this is their Limitless Matte Lip Cream. I, I like this particular one because it feels very blurring. There's a lot of like those silicone-y soft kind of particles in it that really make it blur out quite well. And then I'm gonna just use my fingertips to blend out the edges. Now I finish with the lipstick test. I just, and then any lipstick that ends up on my finger is not gonna end up on my teeth. So this is the finished makeup look. I absolutely love it. It makes me feel just so ready for like spring and summer. I want some warm weather again. And it's definitely something that makes me feel like quite pulled together and pretty and also very youthful. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. If you did or if you found this tutorial helpful, maybe you learned something new, please hit that thumbs up button. Feel free to subscribe. And if you want to know when my next videos are coming out, make sure you don't miss them. Hit the little notification bell down below so that you make sure to know when my next videos are out. I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video.